So Martell really is mad that Melody wants to change and go back to her maiden name. I feel like he's just mad because that's like his last tie to Melody. That's his last tie to her. But it's, I ain't never heard of a man being mad that after a divorce that you caused for the, the, the ex-wife to want to go back to her maiden name. Hell, even Ike Turner said the name stays home. The name stays home. Ike didn't want Tina to keep using that Turner. I guess, Martell. I guess. Whatever. What's good, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Tammy. This is Tammy Talks. Let's talk Love and Marriage Huntsville Season 6, Episode 23, Hold Her Accountable. Y'all see the lampshade here. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Thumbs up the video or thumbs it down if you don't enjoy it. And then hop into the comment section, y'all. Let's talk about everything that happened. So, we start off with Kiki. Back where we were, as of last week, with Melody popping out with this, this drug test that she got from the dollar store, okay? So, Kiki says she's not taking a drug test unless Marceau takes a lie detector. Now, we all know that's not going to happen. Like um, Melody said, we know that Martel's, I mean, Marceau is not going to do that. I mean, even said Marceau was not going to do that. So Kiki agrees that she's going to take the test so that she can shut up the hater. You know, quiet down everybody because I'm sober. And I said, I, you know. <laughs> hey, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Kiki says she's sober. She's sober. The test says she's sober. She's sober. So she takes the test. She comes back and everything comes back negative. So Melody is reading it around, reading all the, the different drugs. And it's like weed, heroin, cocaine, crack, uh, methadone. I said methadone. Wasn't Kiki just on methadone a couple weeks ago with her husband? But y'all know that methadone, apparently, what, what I've read, which y'all have been saying in the comments, methadone is a drug that is used to wean people off of harder drugs. So her husband was saying, I mean, has, we, we saw the scene where he didn't want Kiki to even take the methadone. So maybe Kiki has started to wean herself off of it. I don't know. Y'all were in the comments saying that Kiki took fake pee. And I'm talking about the comments on Twitter that Kiki probably used fake pee and she, she fooled the drug test. Why is it so hard for y'all to believe that this lady might be sober? Maybe she stopped doing the methadone. We, we don't know, but these, this, this test came back. So I guess Kiki went and squatted behind Melody's car and took this test. Not, I mean, Hey, she went somewhere and took the test. So, Melody mentions that Tiffany told her about their son going to a different school um, and said that, you know, it's a little shady that she would even bring that up. So apparently I'm in and Kiki's son, I think this is his name is Amari, is going to be a senior in high school. He either does baseball or football, and it must be something that coincides with what Tiffany's kids play. So I'm in is saying that, Tiffany is just upset that Amari is leaving that team and going to a, a, a school that probably has a stronger program where they're hoping he can get a scholarship for college. Tiffany said that it's shady what they're doing. Kiki said, we're not going to do nothing shady with our kids. And I'm not, I'm in even piped up and said with the, the type of caliber of athlete that their son is, they, they would never jeopardize something like that with his, you know, with his future. So they said that they're just mad that he's just leaving the team that her kids play for. So we then get a scene with Tisha and Marceau. So apparently they're packing. They're going to the beach for five days. Marceau said, we can't go for five days. Now he tries to disguise it as if we have all this work being done. Or is it that y'all feel like you can't afford it, Marceau? Let's not forget, Marceau wants to get used furniture too. So if you have to get used furniture to furnish your newly renovated house, then a five-day vacation. But hey, hey, who are me to judge, right? Whatever. So it's for Mila's birthday. She want to go to the beach. So damn it, we're going to the beach. So it then pivots to Kiki. So Marceau said that he should have handled himself a little better, but he's proud of the way that Tisha handled 
Kiki, Tisha says she's done. She said, this is this has become a cycle now. This is a revolving door. I have to be done with Kiki. You know, Tisha feels that she was assaulted. Is getting a drink thrown on you assault, I, I guess? I guess you can consider it assault. Sure. If Tisha feels assaulted, Tisha was assaulted, right? So he then mentions the situation with Stormy. And Marceau feels like a lot of us feel. Stormy knew good and damn well that you cannot call a man a bitch is not normal some of y'all tried to get in the comments and try to play semantics and all this type of stuff it's not normal it's not okay the average man is going to be offended by being called a bitch to his face by a woman y'all know that I understand that some people don't like the Scots. I understand that some people don't like Melody. But we we also have to use a little bit of common sense here, y'all. It's not hard. We all use a little bit of common sense. Just a bit. I had somebody say that I'm all over the place because sometimes you're defending them. Sometimes you're defending them. It's called being unbiased because I don't know these people. <laughs> Why would I be solely on one person's side in my reviews? I don't know Melody. If she does some shit wrong, then she does some shit wrong. I don't know the Scots. They do something wrong. They do something wrong. Like it, it, it pays me and and benefits me absolutely none to be biased and one sided in these recaps. If you don't like unbiased recaps, I'm not the channel for you. I'm just not right. So I'm always going to point out the right and the wrong in every single person as I see it on screen. So Stormy was wrong. In that situation, no matter how much I think Marceau is an ass, Stormy was wrong in that. So he did say that, you know, when they started talking about if Stormy has ever known somebody that's done drugs, you know, realizing that when she talked about her friend taking care of her son, that that's recent because her son is still young. So they're just going to agree to move forward, not deal with them. Like we got to put some things into perspective. We're adult enough to be petty, but we're also adult enough to know when we did something wrong, right? So cool, bet, all right? We're going to move forward from there. Marceau then talks, I'm um, sorry, Tisha talks about how, oh no, Marceau, I was right. Marceau said he's just more hurt about the situation with Kiki than necessarily angry. Tisha said that Kiki always tells her that Tisha feels like she's better than everybody and that she's perfect. Tisha says she doesn't carry herself like that, but T Tisha does. Tisha absolutely does carry herself as if she's better than certain people, as if her life is better than certain people. When Melody and Martell were going through their issues, Tisha absolutely felt as if she was better because Marceau had not blatantly cheated on her in the public for the world to see. That is definitely the vibe that Tisha put out. Whether Tisha thinks that she's doing this or not, she is. So Marceau said that Tisha could really start to hold herself more accountable. Tisha wants an example. And I feel like if you're going to ask somebody for an example, be ready to hear said example. So Marceau said, well, when we were at the, the Espo meeting, and Melody brought up the issue about the feedback. You weren't receptive. You were very defensive. You didn't want to take accountability that you might have dropped the ball in some planning. So Tisha tries to flip it. No, because it wasn't. This was organized. The beginning wasn't. No, none of it was organized, Tisha. It was not. If y'all are asking for people for money the day of, that's not organized. If you feel that there are too many more people than you think you have space for, you're not organized. If people don't know exactly how this should be, you're not organized. When people can see the, 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 um, the speakers arguing and talking behind the, the little curtain that they had, arguing over who's going to speak and who's not going to speak, it's not organized. It's very simple things you can do to make the expo even better for next time. But the fact that it came from Melody, who you still have an issue with, because, I mean, let's, let's not forget, you said she has a dark soul. So the fact that Melody is the one that gave very helpful, non-shady advice to you, 
about the ex about the expo, you didn't like it. So we get into this back and forth where Tisha still does not want to take accountability for it. Tisha has a hard on formality that she is just not gonna let go of. I guess. So we then get to Melody meeting up with her event planner and her mom. This scene blew me because Melody has this event planner over so that they can plan the name changing party. Cool, right? But you're telling your mom that you have not opened the letter to see if your name change has been granted. So why are we having the party? Why are we having a party and we're planning all these things and we're planning to get our name in lights and we're planning to have this and this and all this stuff set up? Why are you planning for this stuff and you have invitations and you have, you know, samples of different things you're going to have if you don't know for sure? Play with somebody else's. You knew that you you knew that it was granted. But hey, this makes for good TV. So we find out that the court has granted Melody her maiden name back. So she is no longer Melody Cherie Holt. She is now Melody Cherie Rogers. Awesome sauce for her. Melody said that she is recommitting herself to herself. I see absolutely nothing wrong with women when they get a divorce wanting to go back to their maiden name. I'm shocked that Melody did do that. She seems like the type that will want to have the same last name as her kids, which some people do, some women do, which is why they keep um, their married name. But there are some women that b- because of what happened in the, in the marriage, why the result, where the divorce was a result of, they don't want any ties to that man if they don't have to have them. It's understandable why Melody would want to change her name. It is wild to me how many fans and how many people were on Twitter during this episode, like shading her for wanting to change her name back. Who y'all let y'all hatred for some of these people just kind of overshadow like common sense, I guess. I don't know. She wants to change her name. She want to change her name. She's not married to him anymore. Fine. So we get Stormy. Stormy goes over to Kiki House. I'm so sick and I'm asking Stormy why they moved. Is that common? I've had friends that have moved to different houses and stuff like that. Uh, at different apartments, townhouses, condos. I have never once been like, why you move? You moved? Okay, this is nice. You like this better than the old one? I, I guess it's just not a big deal to me. I really don't care why people move usually, but they're asking, why does she move? So once again, we hear that her son is going to play sports, whatever the case. Kiki apologizes for snatching the cards out of Stormy's hand um, at the barbecue. Kiki felt that she, Kiki felt it was disrespectful, I should say. She felt that Tisha was disrespecting her when she went to greet her and Tisha did not greet her. I I mean, is it disrespectful? That's subjective. Do I think that Tisha could have just been like, hey, and kept on going like that? Yes, she could have too. I think Tisha made a bigger spectacle. And I think Kiki was just embarrassed that she went to speak to uh, Tisha and Tisha curved her in front of everybody. That's what I think it is. So she said that Tisha knows her triggers. Apparently being ignored is a trigger. So... She said that she felt that this entire thing, the whole ignoring of it, uh, ignoring her was a plan by Tisha and her wife. I said, Lord, not her wife. She calls Marceau a madam. I said, oh. So she said that, you know, that Marceau probably said, this is what we're going to do, Tisha. She's going to come in. We're going to ignore. And I, I believe that. I wholeheartedly believe that. I do believe that Marceau told Kiki, um, told Tisha, when Kiki walks in, ignore her ass. We're not going to talk to her. We're not going to engage because Tisha was doing a lot. While Kiki was talking, Tisha was, oh my God, my Reese, Reese. And I feel like when somebody is doing something like that, you're trying too hard. The way my ignore game is so strong, the way I can ignore people with the best of them. I have been in the same room as people that like know that I'm ignoring them and have ignored them so smooth, so clean, it's not even funny. 
So Keith Key said that Tisha looks stupid for standing by Marceau arm in arm. Here's the thing. Does Tisha look stupid or do you look stupid for being upset that Tisha wants to stay with her husband? Tisha want to be with Marceau. Let her be with him. Let her be with him. I don't understand why people outside of that marriage care. Nobody should be that offended or should care that much that Tisha does not want to leave Marceau. If she wants to stay willfully ignorant with her husband in this marriage, let her. Let her. What's it to you? People were in the comments saying that, well, it's because, you know, she's she's lied about different things and, and we know that he's cheating. Uh, uh, who cares? I go to sleep every single night. I wake up and go to work every single day and my life has not changed, nor will it ever change because of the fact that Tisha wants to stay married to her husband. <laughs> so I don't see why Kiki cares either. So Kiki said that she really came ready for Tiffany because she's tired of hearing that Tiffany has her name in her mouth all the time, which she kind of does. I feel like Tiffany is like searching for a storyline. And so the fact that Kiki was on the Crime Stoppers, Tiffany saw that and was like, bet, I'm going to grab onto that and I'm going to make another beef with Kiki so that this is what I can talk about outside of the fact that, you know, nobody seems to film with me. One, because you really don't get along with anybody. We don't see, we hardly see Tiffany. Why is she in the intro still face? You know what? If the show comes back, face Tiffany out. Face Tiffany out. Tiffany's just not needed on the cast anymore. So apparently Tiffany did an interview with Carlos and she was saying about how she's much better than Kiki and she doesn't associate with people like that, yada, yada, yada. So Kiki said that she's more educated and she's smarter than Tiffany. To, to, I think Kiki like works at a college or she's like a college. I don't know if she's a professor. She might be, but she might be a lecturer. K Kiki's educated, just like Tisha's educated. Uh, Kiki just is an ignorant ass somebody. That's basically what it is. But it, no, no part of me thinks that she's not educated in the least. So she then said that Tiffany has been talking crap about Stormy's products. Stormy said that she heard her is not worth getting into about it. It's not worth the blow up. She's going to wait for Tiffany to say it to her face. But right now, it's no need for her to get real rah-rah about it. We then get Melody, Tisha, and Kimmy. So they're going to work out. Tisha gets there and she's on, like, she has bad energy immediately she has a little attitude i'm a person that if you're gonna have an attitude don't go you know what i mean like don't come in being the bad news bears and now you giving everybody else the blues because you have an attitude like i feel like this is just one of those scenes where it's on the call sheet and damn it tisha you have to show up so she gets there and Mel is like okay something's wrong with her kimmy come in with her jeep stunting on them and immediately Kimmy clocks that Tisha has an attitude. And Melody was like, she was like this with me too. I don't know what the issue is. So this lady comes out, this older woman that's going to do like different stations with them to work out. And Melody tells uh, the woman that, you know, Kimmy has like some health issues. So her breathing is not like the best kind of on some. Don't have her in here doing no real hard hit you know, workout. So that lady had two t-shirts. Why? Why did you only have two, ma'am? You knew it was three ladies coming. So she gives it to Melody and Kimmy because I guess she said, if y'all going to be on TV, I want y'all to wear my shirt. We can see it on you, sis. But hey, they put it on and participated. So when they're done, Kimmy was saying how, like, her breathing isn't the best. This was hard. And they're asking her, like, is your breathing going to get better? Kimmy says she went to the doctor and she failed all the breathing tests. And the doctor told her it's not going to get better. But Kimmy is determined to get her breathing back to where it is. So 
Kimmy's a nurse. I'm sure Kimmy knows the different strength tests and stuff like that she can do. I know a lot of times when they need you to work on like your breathing or your breath strength, they have you blow in that thing, you know, the little tube and the little ball or whatever jumps up. So I'm sure uh, Kiki, uh, Kiki must be talking about me. <laughs> I'm sure Kimmy uh, is doing everything she can to try to get her breathing back to what it was, her breath control. So Kiki asked Tisha, how are you doing after the barbecue? Tisha said that Kiki has made threats about her in the past. And that's why when she first introduced her to Tisha, and I mean, to um, when Tisha first introduced Kiki to Melody and Motel, that's why she gave them the background info that she did because she herself wasn't rocking with her at that time. It sounds like Tisha and Kiki, which we know, have a very volatile, dysfunctional-ass cousin relationship. And I think if it was not for this show, they would have absolutely no dealings with each other whatsoever. They would have no dealings with each other whatsoever. And I really feel like Kiki coming, I think Kiki coming onto this show was a big mistake anyways, but it's not doing anything to help your cousinly relationship. So... Tisha's um is saying that that's why she just does not want to be around her anymore. So Melody asks if she th still thinks that Kiki is doing drugs. Tisha says she knows she is. She knows the signs. Family members have said that Kiki is still asking for money. Now, I, I just, I don't know if, here's the thing. I don't know if Kiki is lying or if Tisha is lying. That's the thing. Um, because it's very easy for Tisha to get online or get on this show and say all these different things. And because Kiki has a history of drugs, everybody's going to very quickly believe it, right? To me, as I've said before, I don't know, you know, I don't, I'm, I have never been around somebody that's on drugs like that to be like, yeah, she acting like she's on drugs. Kiki be seeming like she's fine to me. She just seems like she's messy as fuck. That's what I get from Kiki. I know a lot of y'all said, well, she's talking fast and her eyes are shifty and all this other type of stuff. I don't be staring at these people that hard when I watch the show to like notice that her eyes are moving back and forth. So I don't know. But I think it is very easy for Tisha to get on here and say, yeah, you know, family members have said Kiki's still going around asking them for money and Kiki did this and Kiki did that when it kind of seems like Kiki might just be the outcast of the family too. You know what I mean? Like there's always that one cousin that is kind of the outcast of the family and it's because they want to stay in Tisha's good graces because Tisha and Marceau have the money in the family. But who knows? So Melody asked if anything happened before the barbecue and Tisha is like I'm getting ready to go I don't want to talk about this and it's like here's the thing Tisha had that conversation with Kiki about whether Marceau was cheating or not that whole debacle T Tiffany I mean not Tiffany uh Tisha doesn't want to talk about that on camera right it's very clear which is why she didn't meet up with Kiki at her house because she didn't want to film and she doesn't want to talk about it now, which is why she doesn't want to mention that they did have a conversation that probably did go left in regards to talking about Marceau, quote unquote, allegedly cheating with somebody. So Tisha said that she knows that they, what they talked, but she just, you know, there was no issue. It was fine. So Melody is like, well, I did talk to Kiki and Kiki does feel bad about what happened, but Kiki feels bad about the fact that you ignored her. And Tisha was like, that's not it. It's more than that. And Melody is like, are you sure nothing else happened? Because, and then Tisha gets up, walks away, says she's fine. She's not dealing with this. I'm going to the beach. And she leaves. So Melody's talking to Kiki, um, Kimmy. And she's like, there's really, I think Tisha's not okay with it. Obviously she's not. 
um, Tisha is going through, you know, this whatever with her cousin. She's embarrassed she got the drink thrown on her. She's probably pissed she got the drink drawn, um, thrown on her. On top of the fact that she probably, whether Tisha's ever going to admit it on camera or not, all of these allegations against Marceau is weighing on that woman. Because nobody wants to hear constantly that their husband is cheating on them. It doesn't help that Marceau jokes about it. It doesn't help that Marceau goes on trips to Africa by himself. It doesn't help that Marceau ups and does all these different things. That's not helping anything. So I'm like, it's weighing on Tisha. She don't want to keep talking about it. But in the same vein, Tisha constantly talked about Melody and Martell when they were getting a divorce. Tisha threw that shit in Melody's face almost every chance she got. This is karma. This is a karmic response. Tisha is always talking and asking somebody if they've dealt with infidelity and what happened and all that type of stuff. We saw her do it the first five seasons. This is damn near the only season that Tisha has not sat up there and brought up the fact that Marcel was cheating on Melody or that Melody's uh, marriage failed or that this person is cheating on this person. But now she's just asking everybody, have you dealt with cheating? Have you dealt with infidelity? That's what she's doing now. It's weird. It's weird and it's karma. But Tisha is never going to admit on camera that she might sort of possibly somewhat in the back of her mind question if Marceau is or has cheated on her. She's not going to do it. So the final scene or before that, Tisha says in her confessional, that she is assaulted and she was assaulted and Melody doesn't understand no means no and Tisha neither do you. We have seen many a scene where you have brought up something and because it doesn't affect you, you have continually talked about it and talked about it and talked about it. But the fact that you're in the hot seat this season or this, you know, uh, season six, part B, the fact that you're in the hot seat because of this expo and all this other stuff, now no means no. No means no didn't mean a damn thing when you were doing that to other people the first five seasons, though. Y'all are on reality TV. People are going to talk about things. So the final scene is Martel showing up to Nell and Chris Fletcher's house. So he has some wine for um, a dinner party. They talk about how Melody didn't speak to Martel at the barbecue. I don't understand why that's a big deal. It really is none of your business either, either Nell. So Martel said he's going to keep speaking to her. Nell said, I told her that she could have at least spoke. Martel said, yeah, because she speaks everywhere else. She didn't want to speak to you. I feel like that's not a big deal. That's not a big deal. I, Based on when this was filmed, I felt like this is the time that you were dragging her into court. Because you were trying to get full custody of them kids too. Or this might have been around the time when you were trying to, you know, threaten her with revenge, um, with revenge porn. This might have been around the time when you were on social media calling her everything but a child of God in your Instagram story. So I don't understand why Martel thinks that he can talk shit about somebody and drag them and do all this other stuff. And just because you say hello, they're supposed to say hi back. That's not life. It's not how life works. And now it's just none of your business. I wish I would not speak to somebody, my ex-husband that cheated on me and is now trying to take my kids away from me. I, I don't have to say hi to him. I don't. I have to work with him in response to the kids. The kids are not here. So us being at a barbecue for work, I don't have to say hi to him. I don't. Just don't. So Neil asks how he feels about Melody changing her name. Martell said it's hard to deal with, about as hard as it was to deal with when she was cheating on you. Probably about as hard as it is for Melody to deal with that 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 um this other child that you have now has the last name Holt as well. Such is life. 
So Nell brings up the name change party and says she's going. Martel wants to know the name of every single one of his friends that's going because if you're supposed to be his friend, you shouldn't be going. That's the most asinine thing I have ever heard. He understands the divorce party, but he said a name change party is a slap in the face. So he then in his confessional said he doesn't understand why she wants to change the name to Rogers because she didn't do anything amazing with that last name. Did Melody get her degrees with that last name? Did they get married before they graduated college? I went, <laughs> whatever, too easy. So Martel said this is melon in his face. Is that a Southern uh, phrase? <laughs> I thought it was egg on your face. He said melon. Nell said, how was it melon on your face? You know, it was melon on her face when you had an affair. You know, Martel don't like for people to throw that into his face. Well, Melody cheated too. Look, there is no proof that Melody cheated, right? Melody could have cheated. You know, at that one reunion, was it the season five reunion? When they were going back and forth and she sucked somebody off or whatever the case happened, there's no proof of it, Martel. That's what it comes down to at the end of the day. But there is proof that you cheated because it's a young, uh, a, a little baby running around named Knox or a Maverick. What, depending on when you and baby mommy get it together on what y'all want to call this little boy. But there is proof that you cheated, Martel. But my whole thing is there's nothing worse than a tit for tat ass nigga. So the fact that people are calling you out, what was you? she? She did it too. That's beside the point. Two wrongs don't make a right. They don't. So Martel is like, well, why didn't you ask Melody if she cheated? Why would somebody rent? Why? Here's the thing. If it comes out that you cheated, Martel, why would somebody randomly go say, well, Melody, did you cheat first to get cheated on? That's not how this works. If my friend tells me that her husband cheated on her and she now wants to get a divorce, the first thing that I'm going to think to do is not ask her, well, did you cheat first? Like, come on. Come on. But this also just shows that Martel still lacks accountability. So all these times where he keeps saying that he takes accountability for what he did and how, you know, his part that he played in the demise of the marriage. No, you don't. Deep down, you don't. You're just saying what sounds good because there was a point in time where you wanted to get your wife back. You wanted to get Melody back. And the fact now that she is changing her name, she is gone forever from you outside of having to deal with these children. How old is Sugar Mama? About three, four. Y'all got a, a, a good strong 14 more years that y'all have to be in communication on a maybe day-to-day -day or weekly basis. But okay. So he keeps saying Melody cheated with multiple guys. He has the proof. And if you want the proof, he can pull out the proof. Martel then said people need to stop bringing up the fact that he cheated because it was three years ago. Neil said, yeah, because you're single. And Martel screams, I know. Martel, so if you're single, why do you care that she's changing her name? You see how you just walked, walked into that? You're screaming, you're single. You can do whatever she, whatever you want. Melody is single and can do whatever she wants to. And she wants to change her name back to her maiden name because she is no longer married to you. And she does not want to hold your last name. Why is that a big deal? So Martel wants people to stop bringing up his cheating without bringing up her cheating. So now Nell is getting activated. And I just, I promise you, I don't like Nell on the show. I just don't. So Martel feels that people going to the name change party are picking a side. So are people picking a side when they were hanging out with you and Sheree? Are people picking a side when they went to your wine event and they were kicking in and talking to Sheree? Is that picking a side? That's not picking a side. She's changing her name. So Martel keeps screaming that Nell should have asked Melody if she cheated too. So now he got to leave because whatever. Next episode, we see the party. We see Nell being messy, running back to um, Melody, telling her what Martel said. We see Nell also telling Chris that Martel got a little brolic with her. And then we get a scene with all their kids. 
Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I, I, they're trying to make the Scots and the Fletchers like carry the show and it's not giving what they thought it would give because nobody wants to see the Scots that well some of y'all do I ain't gonna say nobody some of y'all want to see the Scots that bad I don't and I sure don't want to see an episode or a scene full of all them Fletcher kids but let me know what you guys thought about this episode and I'll catch you guys in the next one peace